Hey guys, welcome back. So, another video for the Tea Roadster. This time there's lots of parts delivery. Parts are arriving fast. Which they need to. <laughs> they do, but that means that if I have to work as fast as the parts are coming, we're in trouble. Ready to unbox some more stuff? Let's do it. All right, so Godzilla power plant does Still justice work. does justice for the car. But well, with that, he did a rear end and some other pieces that would also do justice. So we have all the front suspension, which is yep. very much like Ed's, even the brakes. And some might question drum brakes on this 400 plus horsepower motor, but you gotta remember it's 1800 or less pounds car. Like so car. the drum brakes always did work. They will continue to work. So one of the things that Dad and Nolan were talking about that they really wanted was a quick change rear end. And when we were up at Speedway, Speedway sells quick change <clears> rear ends, but they're out of stock. They're hard to get right now. Yeah, they are. What did you talk to him about? Like it's gonna be um, like not only Several the, months, it I wasn't did. only the Speedway one, but the winners one. And not just from Speedway, from everywhere. They're just out of stock. Yeah. COVID. <laughs> COVID. So um, something hit me we're building a land speed car on hot rod garage and 32 roadster and we wanted to put a quick change rear end in that but our car that we purchased already has a quick change but i remembered in the back of my mind when we were driving home from speedway i'm like who told me that they have a quick change none other than david david freiberger told me that he had a quick change rear end yeah he said if you need a quick change for that car <laughs> i have one that i had built for my Bonneville car and never used. So David having it built for his Bonneville car, it's gonna be bitching for our car. <laughs> so I thought about it and I was like, hang on. So I shot him a text. I was like, hey, I remember you had this this quick change rear end that you were willing to sell for Hot Rod Garage. Would you sell it for us? Because we need we need it for Ed's car. Explain the whole deal. He's like, yeah. And he bought this like eight years ago. And he's like, I didn't use it. And we're expecting it to just be stuck in a corner, unboxed and everything. Dirty, rusted. Dirty, nasty. Uh, because that would make sense. He got uh, it, it would be it, of his mind. Totally. And um, so then he's like, he remembered almost every detail about it off the top of his head. It's not even anywhere close for him to look at. <laughs> he was right about it all. So he had his guys bring it down to Iski and dropped it off and Nolan shipped it to us. Yep. Pretty cool, right? It's like exactly what we needed. Yeah. And it was available right now. Yeah, it was great. So uh, this is the big version. I'm going to flip this around, unbox it. Dad can talk more about it, but pretty cool how it came to be. So. <laughs> All right. So there's a couple different winters, or you can get a different style. This is a big one. So explain that. Well, the deal with the quick change is for us, the car is is a recreation of Ed's, but with a modern twist. So Ed's has a banjo rear end, just an open drive line banjo rear end, like whatever, you know, early Ford rear end. Uh, we didn't want just a banjo rear end because we want a little more strength than that. So quick change is still a banjo style rear end. So it only made sense since everything else, the engine transmission's upgraded. Let's upgrade the differential as well. These early quick changes, or I mean, these quick changes used an early Ford ring and pinion, as I understand, they're huge. I think they're like 10 inches or something. So they're very strong. So that's that's the reason we went with a quick change. And there's a couple different style quick changes. So your car for Hot Rod Garages Lakes Racing has what's called a V8 style. It's a little guy. Yeah, little <laughs> bitty. So it uses basically, as I understand, like 35, 40, or maybe even earlier, Ford ring and pinion size, small. And they're really cute. They're really <laughs> bitching. You can still change the gear ratio just like this. But this yeah. is called, this is based off a of champ style, Halibrand champ style. So this is a much bigger, look at that thing. It's massive. So giant compared to much heavier duty. It's got 35 spline axles in it, like a, a real race car rear end. So this has got Ford axle ends on it with just standard board style axles, which is really good. Of course, we got this one used, so to speak. It's not used, but it's already built for something else. So it's set up for four and a half inch bolt circle, 
we have five and a half inch on these wheels. So I was a little concerned about that. We're gonna have to get different axles. Luckily, look how far in those are. We're gonna be able to drill in between these, tap them and put five and a half inch bolt circle for the big Ford wheels that we're gonna be using. Five and a half inch bolt pattern for, that's just so giant. Like that's like race car stuff now, big high horsepower, so it's kind of funny. <laughs> it was always, you know, back in my younger days where we were slower and I didn't know so much, but like Ford's five inch and five and a half inch bolt circles, like why, you know, why? but it really is stronger. You know, the further out you move those bolts, the stronger the wheel's gonna become. All right, so all that sounds cool and all that, but um, for those that might not know, what is a quick change? Exactly what the words imply, quick change. So what they did back in the old days, because a lot of people back in the Ed's time would drive their car to the lakes or drive it to the drag strip. Well, the gear ratio is never optimum between the lakes and the drag strip or the street. So somebody, and I don't know who, Mr. Quick Change, I think was his name, came up with this idea. They took their banjo Ford rear end, which the pinion typically comes out, or not typically, the, the pinion comes straight out, the same plane as the axle on a, on a banjo rear end. So what they did is somebody come up with the idea, let's turn it upside down, point the pinion backwards. So instead of the pinion being stuck out here, they rotated the rear end around, pointed it out here. Well, that's what this upper gear is, is the pinion that drives the ring gear. Well, now the rear end's gonna run backwards, right? But wait, the pinion's pointing out the back, so it's all screwed up. So let's put a set of gears in here behind the car instead of in front of the car where the pinion would go. And let's put a shaft underneath the third member and put the pinion down lower. You can see now that the pinion's actually underneath the rear end instead of up here in the center. But what that does, by putting a set of gears in, that ro counter rotates. It, it kills the upside down backwards part because to make gears roll the same direction, you have to have an idler in the middle. So by putting two gears, they roll backwards. So you put a gear here, a gear here on the shaft and a pinion out front. Now all they gotta do is pull this cover off, change two gears, you slide them off. You lose, they don't even bolt in, you just slide them in and out. You put two different gears in there and you have two different ratios. I mean, you can change it quickly. So that's what we have here. This is a set of the gears. They just slide on the splines, drive the pinion with one and drive the drive shaft with the other. So here's an example. I think this is a 412 ring and pinion. And I'm not sure what gear is in here at the moment, but this is a 34A gear. Let's look at the 34A. It's up a little higher. 34A right here. So with a 412 rear end, which is right up above, this gear has 16 on one, teeth on one and 22 on the other. So if we put it in one direction, it gives you a 3.0 final drive ratio. You turn them upside down, you get a 567. So let's say you wanted to go eighth mile racing back in the day and you needed a really low gear, that would be awesome. But for us, 3.0 is more like what you'd want out on the lakes or the salt flat, maybe even higher gear ratio. You don't really know that. You know, that depends on, I suppose, the conditions and you know how the, the horsepower to weight ratio and everything is. So for us, if we wanna change it, let's say maybe we really want a 254 ratio. You just come down and you order gear set number 30 with 16 and 26 teeth. Now you have a 254 ratio, but you'd have a 670 if you flipped it over. That's pretty much useless, but you're not worried about that so much. You're just looking for the gear ratio that you want and you buy a, a fairly inexpensive pair of gears, unbolt a few bolts, slip them in, and you've changed your gear ratio in five minutes. Pretty dang cool. It's probably time to get to work. So next you guys can see actual body work, which is coming up right after this. Lots of body work. Lots of, you only see part of the body work for now because this is going to be a continual process. Yeah, lots of body <laughs> welding and fabricating work. Have fun. All right, these voiceovers would be a lot more entertaining if it was dad and I together, but here's the, here's the gist of this. I am in California. He is in Arkansas. He is in Sema Crunch. I am in 10 other crunches. So we're doing this separate. Um, sorry guys, you have to deal with me for this. So let's go over what he meant by lots of metal work to get this ready. Keep in mind, 23T Roadster. 
that's 100 years old. So just imagine the wear and tear on, on the body. And this one was not kept in the best condition on top of that. So lots and lots of work. Basically the way he did it was he pulled the entire body apart and he took each piece over to the sandblasting cabinet. Got all the rust off of it and then got down to what he was actually working with. It looks a little bit rusty in these videos, but that's actually just prep, like metal prep, uh, and it puts that color on there. So you can see all the different holes. You can see different, um, not just holes like what you're seeing there, but you can also see rust pits and holes. You can see how the bottom is rusted out. You can see through the body in some pieces. So he went through with each piece and made patch panels and welded the different holes that were from the rust. This was about a two week process where he went through on each of the panels and did this. After he got that patch, not only did he have to get it where it's a solid piece again, but he also had to go through and, you know, hammer it out and get it as straight as he could. So um, you can see here, I believe this is, this is the driver's side. So he'd go through and weld like that and go through and hammer, dolly and hammer it. And uh, you can see how many pieces are having to be patched. The body was broke in some points, like, you know, kind of like it's ripped down the side of it. So uh, lot, lots of body work. So coming up here is going to be a panel that I'll actually, he'll actually walk you through how he would do each of these panels. So it looks like a fast process but it's not so uh, I think you're gonna like the the step-by-step -step part so check that out now I'm just kind of guessing here it's an odd shape and I don't really want to get into making it sciencing it out but what I'm gonna do is make it a little bit bigger than this rotten piece I'm going to draw like right there, and then I'm going to add like that. That's quarter inch to three eighths of an inch. I'm just going to pick any random measurement, like five sixteenths of an inch. So I'm going to put this back here, and I'm going to leave it a little bit long so I can overlap the metal that's on the door. This doesn't even have to be back on the door. I just don't want it to be not on the door. It just seems wrong to me. Add this back here. So, I'm gonna cut that out. See if we can bend it. Trusty ear protection. funny because it's wider but you can see that piece is wider so there's several ways to do this I gotta bend that quarter inch flange up I've got some tipping wheels on my roller I could just roll that through and tip that up but because it's really not going to be seen I'm going to do it the fastest easiest way So I'm going to remark that because I'm going to bend it from this side. Hey, that's pretty crude, but guess what? It's a T model. It's crude from the factory. So I'm gonna bend this around. The idea is that's gonna lay up in there, be just a little bit long, so I can kind of have some overlap there on that bottom. And I'm gonna TIG braze it, silicone bronze. Get that straight, and then this has got to curve up. Look at this. I think mine looks crude. That's factory T model stuff. So mine kind of looks the same. Now I can 
weld all those back together. Let's go see what that looks like. I'm going to get a grinder and clean that burr off of the inside. I'm going to straighten that up. I'm going to have to trim this piece that I just made a little bit. It's pretty darn close. right here but not on the top side just on the bottom okay so this is gonna have to be shortened a little I'm going to go belt sand that off that's my quickest easiest way sander leaves a burr on the back side but that's why I have this sander for a couple different grid papers so it's a little bit odd shape but it doesn't have to be right it's going to be covered up with a poultry and you'll, nobody's ever going to see it again I just can't stand to leave it not kind of fixed I could have left that rust in there and it would have been okay but I don't want that. I think I can start welding that on, working it around, fitting it as we tack. finish welding that up but the beauty of the silicone bronze is I don't have to put a lot of heat on it I'm brazing it like except I can control that much better being TIG again this was not necessary to pack if I could have cut it off all the way around and just welded that door in because we're going to weld the door shut on this thing but i didn't want to look in a crack a door gap and see open air i want to see the jam on the bottom you'd probably never do that at the bottom but i didn't like it i didn't want it to be half ended so what i'm going to do now is run along here run a bead of this silicone bronze around there make it one piece you don't actually melt the parent metal, you just get it hot, kind of like soldering, except it works much better. It's strong, you don't have to have the heat like you do with a torch. You can do a really nice looking job if you want to take the time. I'm going to grind it so it doesn't have to be. I didn't want to do that inside because that outer corner was, and I may go back and touch that on the outer corner, maybe not, but I'm just tap this down. Would you look at that? 
Okay, so that needs to cool down. And I need to beat it around just a little bit. That's a nice solid door bottom. And there's what factory Henry Ford looks like down through there you can see and I don't think that was from being beat up that's just the way it stretched when they made this thing it's literally a tin can these corners were just folded and then they had wood inside here so that's why that's rotted out because it sat there with water soaking into that wood they were just overlapped and nailed you can see the nail holes but you know it was a $20 car let's see there's one there's one there's one that barely caught in the metal. So this was nailed in, but you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six nail holes is all that was holding the wood in there. So it was never meant to be around for very long. I'm going to, while I'm standing here talking, I'm gonna weld that hole up too. That's actually a solid door again. I think that probably has to, well, no, they're both like that. That's, I guess, the way Henry did it. That looks like a factory deal. So I'm gonna grind that. I'm gonna do a little bit of work on his stuff right here because I don't like it. Let's do this real quick. Cool us down just a little bit. We got a door. All right, so Godzilla, not a ton of parts out there yet. There's st stuff, but it's not like it's it's a new platform. And regardless, there's not Ed Iskandarian cast valve covers on the market. Well, we're going to keep the top of it a secret for the moment. But what we've said from the beginning is we wanted valve covers that look like what Ed put on his overhead valve, single valve, flathead, which mm -hmm. is pretty cool. You'll probably insert a picture there. But we'll put Iskandarian in there. And I have some options. I could do like Ed did. I could take a chunk of wood, grind it, shape it, and then smooth it out and cast, sand cast like Ed did. And he scribed his name in it with a screwdriver. You know what? Funny story. Not trying to change your story because that's the story that's out there. That's the story that everybody's heard. But actually, when I sat down and talked to Ed, he actually told me he took some dimensions to a pattern making class i think in santa monica him and his friend john athens and they dropped those dimensions off to a pattern making class all they had to pay was the price of the wood the class made the patterns and then he took them and had them cast somewhere else and then wrote his name in them that's cool but still it was done i'm just saying i'm just saying them, except ed didn't do it himself. i'm just saying it's funny because that's you know anyways well i would do it ahead. myself but it's just time it's time consuming so we've got this live in guy in my shop <laughs> he doesn't want to work on anything he no. wants to work on this i just want to sit and type all day and draw cool stuff but you know what <laughs> i mean he's good at it really good at it so we came up or i came up with the idea i'd like to make an adapter because see edge valve covers were much smoother see how these are so scalloped and the the bolts are hanging down below so we came up with the idea to make an adapter and then make a valve cover that bolts to it well he got on it and faster than I could ever start with my wood, he made the adapter. And then the adapter, it's got an O-ring under it. So it'll basically seal just like the factory valve cover. And then this, I mean, literally no valve covers ever, only have two bolts holding them down. So um, that was the hard part, but we made it to where there'd just be two studs that bolt into that adapter. And then on the bottom, so when he's referring to the two studs, that's what Ed had. Right there, those two studs right there with nuts on them. But the bottom of this will have an O-ring on it also. And it has to be clearanced for the injectors. But from the top, it still looks just like Ed's valve covers. So that's the whole idea on this Godzilla. One of the kind of cool, I guess, it maybe 
not necessary. I don't know. It's different. It's cool. The injectors actually go into the cylinder head, but they squirt down into the port. They're not direct injection. They're just squirting into the cylinder, into the port, rather than being an intake manifold. So I don't know if there's advantages, disadvantages, putting the fuel closer to the valve, which the disadvantage of that is it's not getting the cooling effect, but I'm not an engineer. So the fact is that they're scalloped out for those injectors and we don't really want that look and he solved it by doing, doing this, this adapter. But we're 3D printing it to make sure everything is actually gonna work. But I'll show you, this took seven hours to print this just cause it's so big. And then also this print right here is gonna take like two days. But we had to cut it up into four pieces and we had to make it to where they interlock. But either way, two days of printing with $5 of plastics, easier test fit and trial than carving out of wood. And, and it's not just it that, wrong. test fitting's cool, but if I choose to sand cast, I'll use that as my plug. I'll, I will pack sand around his plastic valve cover, take it out and that will be my plug. So I won't have to right. sand wood to make it like mm -hmm. they did in 1938. So that's the cool part. You guys started looking at this, I think, what? three days ago yesterday was it yesterday okay so you guys started looking at it yesterday um you spent all day yesterday drawing it and measuring and stuff and by if, it, if the printer would print faster you could have a <laughs> prototype right now but it's yeah. cool because it's really quick so but that's one more neat thing go ahead we need to add that drawing there will work we can send that to somebody with a mill and they can make us a billet valve cover so we may do both i really want to sand cast one but that's always a question if it comes out good enough because that's not what I do. I'm gonna do it on a very small scale, but I think I wanna sand cast a set of valve covers. They look like Ed's, but then there's a surprise for the top of the motor. You're gonna like we it. We may want billet on the valve covers, but we may have both. Let's watch this process. Yeah. So these basically, we made them to where it's just gonna snap together and be one whole piece. Here. Here. I'll you, hold something. You hold them. Hold that one. Yeah, it weighs nothing. But this will literally bolt on. See the countersink yep. for the bolts? So I'd say that probably goes there. Mm -hmm. And that one's going to go here. Yeah. So this will all be glued nope, together. Upside, the other I guess. way around, right? Yep. Nope, it goes this way. Yeah. It'd be it's nice a puzzle. There. Might have to super glue them. Yeah. Slide that in there. I don't want to drop this uh, other part. It actually fits. You gotta realize this is the first time he just peeled that off of his yeah. printer deck there. So now, how's that go? Yeah, go I think it's the other way. way. Yeah, flip it. Flip it over. I'm afraid we're about to. I'm about to drop it. It needs to be glued together or something. Yeah. But this will. We can have this cut and billet now. So that will bolt onto the head. We can actually test for this. Here, hang on. Let's see, let's take this off of here. First trial. I'd say that's pretty as oh. good as you can nice. get. Okay, put my, I'm in the center of my bolt hole. So, uh, you are too. So check that out. What we've accomplished here is being able to have a valve cover that will look more rectangle. The ends aren't as sloped as the Ford motor is, and he's got his threads. That's even threaded if you look yeah. there. You yeah, can you screw can a three eight threads. You can put a 3 8 fine thread, I'm assuming that yeah. is. And then these, all we got to do is get countersunk flathead bolts. metric bolts, which we don't have in stock. But that will seal with an O-ring all the way around that head. Then the valve cover will seal, but it'll look rectangle. It's going to look just like Ed's. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Very it cool. Fits. Nice. Sorry, I'm not used to stuff fit in the first try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty that's cool. That's really cool. Nice. It actually matches the motor now with how wide it is. Yeah, it that, does. That valve cover, how big it's going to be, matches way better than that skinny guy. And the head, the valve covers on that flat head are big. Mm -hmm. They are really big. So it's actually going to look a lot like Ed's motor, except it, Ed's wouldn't have all that fancy stuff up front there. Pretty dang cool, dudes. Heck yeah. yeah. Like it. Okay, check back in two days. Cool For work. you guys, Good just job. a couple seconds. All right, you guys remember when I said check back in two days? It's been like two weeks. 
Well, it's been like five days. There's a f there's a few hours in this piece of plastic. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Not to mention the first one we started printing for 50 hours was a bust. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's like Legoland around here. <laughs> it is. But it looks almost like Ed's. Right. Da, 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 da. So it's pretty cool. So this, go ahead and explain, but this is not just one piece. As you can see, there's actually three pieces, and then the bottom side is made yeah. out of four pieces. So basically, we printed the bottom piece that Dennis and I showed you guys last week. Printed that, tested on here, and it was a little too wide. So I made modifications to that and then had to make modifications up here to get this O-ring to seal. So this piece is actually different than all the other pieces because I kept changing it, but I got smarter. Instead of changing everything and reprinting everything, I just reprinted one piece until I got it right and then went from there. Then we printed these. So the idea is it has an adapter that bolts to the head and then the valve cover bolts to the adapter. And the reason is because we want these two bolts. We want the two bolts and we want the valve cover to be a little bit bigger and we want it to have less of this scalloped look. So, you know, for the most part, that's a pretty smooth valve cover, just the notches for the injectors. Yeah, try to make the notches for the injectors basically as close as you can get them without hitting the injectors. So that way it looks like a... Which from right here, I mean, piece. it looks smooth. Yeah. If I could get it to, there we go. This is printed different because I printed these vertical, which obviously they look a lot better, but I had to print this one horizontal because it has the locators in it, so I couldn't print it vertical. So, with that said, now, after you, you still have a little bit of refinement to do. Yeah, so like the corners where I filleted these, the corners hang out, or these aren't radius right. Right. And then, uh, so we're gonna round it yeah, just a little bit more. more. Edge just looks a little more round there and a little more round on this radius here and change this font to Edge. They're going to try to scan it and we can put the real font in there. But that's pretty cool. You can see where it's going and then this will be cast. So once the final version of this is done, you're going to take it, glue it together, sand it, smooth it, all of that. Yep. Pretty cool. I'd say check back in a couple days, but... Might be a couple weeks. Right? Might be a couple weeks. <laughs> what did you just figure out? Well, I'm sending this to my buddies, Nolan and Ben Strader. Ben's like, that's cool. And, you know, so I send it to Nolan and I get this text back while I'm talking to Ben. He says, got to spell it right. <laughs> I put an A instead of an E. <laughs> I, I, I looked things. it up the first time and I'm like, oh, I thought it was an A. So then the next time I'm like, it's an A. Not I a have e. to check it every time, to be fair. Megan and I have this conversation. We check it every time we have to say it because naturally you'd put an A, but it's not. I wouldn't. Oh. D-E-R, Darian. Not, Darian. would it be Darian? <laughs> <laughs> Oopsie. Oh, well. well, I never even looked at the spelling because it just didn't occur to me that he would make that mistake. I'm, I'm new here. He's a fabricator. He didn't graduate or anything. <laughs> I never even learned to read. Yeah, we can tell. Obviously. <laughs> All right, guys, and that is a wrap for this video. These are a little bit hard to get out because, that, like I said earlier, Dad's in Arkansas and I'm in California. Um, we have been like that for a lot of the year, which is different projects. So I hope you still enjoy the voiceovers. Dad is posting a lot about the car because he's really rushing to get it ready for SEMA right now. So these delay these updates are obviously a little delayed. But if you want to see more up to date, head over to his Instagram. It's Dennis Taylor 522 and uh, check out in real time. But the the build videos are coming out. Um, hopefully, let me know. Let me know what you guys like. Do you like seeing him work in real time? Do you like learning from him, or do you like it a little more lighthearted? Anyways, thanks for watching, and as always, be happy, go fast, and stay pretty. I will see you guys next time.